Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Today is our seventh lecture of global business management. Uh, the topic of today's lecture is international trade theory. The learning objectives of today's lectures are as follows. To understand theoretical underpinnings why countries trade with each other. This is the first objective of today's lecture. The second objective is to be aware of the different theories that explain trade flows between nations. Our focus would be on the following theories. Uh, Heckscher and Ohlins theory. This is the first theory we are going to discuss. The second one is Leontief paradox. The third one is product life cycle, which is proposed by Baron. The, th uh, the next one is trade, uh, new trade theory. And the last one is we are going to discuss Porter diamond. Before we start uh, today's lecture, first we quickly recap the last lecture. Uh, in the last lecture, we had discussed about the concept of free trade theory, of free trade and uh, global business across the countries. And we had discussed about the absolute advantage. Um, we started with uh, mercantilism law, absolute advantage and competitive advantage. These were the three theories or sort of we can say these are the three notions we had discussed in the last lecture. Uh, first of all, the free trade refers to a situation where a government does not attempt to influence through quotas or duties what is uh, citizens can buy from another country or what they can produce and sell another country. Free trade means a uh, country is permitting to uh, free flow of trade or buying or selling of products from uh, for their uh, uh, citizens across the countries mean they can buy and sell products without any restrictions across the countries this is the basic definition of the free trade the pattern of free international trade are different uh, dif difficult to explain the thing is that uh, uh, as because of the globalization or because of the as with the passage of time the pattern of international trade are changing uh, substantially if we go back and we see that the um, early decades after the second world war 60s 70s and 80s there was a different pattern of trade mean at that time there was only one uh, country or uh, industrialized countries were predominantly uh, led by usa and uh, other countries like Japan and EU, they were with USA as considered, were considered as industri industrialized countries. But later on, with the advent of the EU and other political uh, reforms and uh, uh, breaking up of uh, Soviet Union, we have seen that uh, the trade pattern has changed significantly. And when we see the 90 era of 90s and this millennium, uh, we have seen the emergence of uh, new developing countries as uh, emerging economies as, uh, and uh, because of these significant changes across the globe we it is very difficult to explain the flow uh, of trade across the nations and uh, initially there was first concept was mercantilism which uh, uh, which uh, tried to explain the flow of trade across the uh, across the countries according to ma mercantilism uh, it's a crude case for government involvement in in promoting exports and limiting imports I mean important thing is mercantilism was based on or we can say that it's, it was more focusing on uh, increasing the export and limiting the imports according to mercantilism uh, f f it's more benefit for the countries to make more exports because they are getting money and when they are importing things of course they are paying the money and they are w the countries are experiencing cash outflows that's why this concept emphasis on the more uh, export this one is basically under under 
underlying this uh, mercantilism law is zero sum game mean both countries have to face the important thing is when they do import or export they uh, uh, they have to focus on export and important thing is whenever they are getting something it is uh, when the country is getting some benefit it is at the cost of other countries this is the important concept. It is, it is the cost of other country. I mean, some, uh, if some country is getting benefit and simultaneously other country is going to get some uh, negative things because of this export. This is the basic concept of mercantilism. Later on in, in 1776, uh, Smith proposed absolute uh, advantage concept, uh, which according to that concept, Countries differ in their ability to produce goods uh, efficiently. A country has an absolute advantage in the production of a product when it is more efficient than any other country in producing it. Mean according to absolute advantage, uh, this theory says that uh, each country has some strongholds. They have strongholds in producing certain products and they are uh, weaker ends. They are, they, they are not very strong in producing the other products. What they have to do in such situation, uh, they have to focus on producing their uh, those products which are in, on which they are efficient in production, and they have to export only those products to those countries. Where uh, and on the other hand, uh, for instance, in, uh, this law absolute advantages uh, they they were providing the example of England and Par in and France. England was very uh, good at production. Uh, with textile products uh, because of uh, lands uh, and uh, the low cost labor at that time because this was uh, this this law was proposed in 1776 and we are talking about that situation and uh, in that era in that period england was uh, was uh, got have more ability to produce uh, textile more efficiently on the other hand france was very good uh, and uh, uh, they could produce the uh, wine more efficiently. What they had to do, uh, in what ways they have to do the trade with each other, this theory according to absolute advantage is proposed that England should export the textile products to the France and in return they have to import the alcohol uh, wine products from France. That's how they do the uh, trade. Subsequently, uh, Ricardo proposed uh, another theory. They were, they were, uh, in in fact, uh, Ricardo continued the same concept of absolute advantage, and they p he proposed the competitive advantage. What he said, uh, what he suggests, that uh, in in fact, the countries shouldn't focus on the only on their competitive advantages in trade. I mean, when they are going to trade with each other, they shouldn't only focus on those products which they can which they can produce efficiently. They can p they can trade. Uh, or swap their products with other countries even uh, this mean buying goods from other countries that it could produce most efficiently even they could produce things more efficiently even then they have to uh, make the trade of those products with other countries like they, they, this uh, this guy is uh, trying to explain the competitive advantage theory with the help of the example of the uh, US trade between US and India and they were saying uh, this guy was saying that despite that U.S. got the high technology and they got a competitive advantage in uh, um, better technology and skilled workers, and they have to focus on producing the computer product. This is the first thing. And on the other hand, this guy is also saying that when they when we see on the textile products, even even in textile products, of, uh, USA has more advanced technology. In uh, in techno advanced machinery in producing the textile as compared to the India, but what they have to do the USA has to compare their abilities across the industries. Mean USA has better technology of producing the compu computers as compared to the textile products. What they have to do they have to export those computers to to India and import the textile products from India because they have the cheap labor uh, things and they are less uh, they will be much cheaper for the USA to import the same textile product from the India and despite that USA 
uh, has the ability to produce the textiles but they but they, but they have to see or they have to concentrate only on the most efficient production uh, products in that way uh, the difference between absolute advantage and comparative uh, com comparative advantages they have the the country have to focus on the comparison in the uh, across their own industries in which industry they have more uh, efficient production this is the example that we had quoted uh, last time that uh, ghana and uh, south korea both have the ability to produce cocoa and rice in the figures that which shows that cocoa the uh, the uh, the limitation were we suggested at that time that uh, ghana and uh, south korea have the 200 res unit of resources to produce these uh, this is the hypothetical scenario and they have the 200 uh, unit of resources to produce these two products cocoa and rice and it as it shows this is the example of the absolute advantage ghana could produce uh, maximum uh, uh, 10 cocoa while using the resources all those resources are 20 rice 20, 20 ton of rice south korea 40 tons of cocoa and 10 ton of rice uh, when they are producing and they are not doing any trade what going to happen they are going to stick in uh, the figure uh, in between these two limits what they have what the ghana can do uh, ghana could produce 10 unit of cocoa and 5 unit of rice and South Korea uh, could produce 2.5 unit of cocoa and 2.5 unit ton of cocoa and 10 ton of rice and total production of of cocoa across both countries it would be the 12.5 tons of cocoa and for rice they are 15 ton of uh, rice if they are not doing trade with each other if they are just focusing on their specialized products they are just producing their own products they are not doing trade but they are uh, focusing on their own products what are what going to happen uh, i mean ghana is going to utilize all those resources on their uh, producing cocoa in that way they can use uh, they can produce 20 ton of uh, cocoa and if, and zero rice and on the other hand south korea could produce uh, 20 ton of uh, rice and no cocoa and uh, again the total production would be of cocoa would be the 20 tons of cocoa and 20 ton of rice uh, across the both nations if we compare this production uh, it, it's a 20 for each pro cocoa and rice and if we see in the second uh, the rows above this one where the total production of cocoa when they are not focusing on their specialized units it is 12.5 uh, unit uh, ton of cocoa and 15 ton of uh, rice we can see the difference and when they are swapping their product six tons of cocoa with six tons of rice across the countries what gonna happen the Ghana will left with 14 tons of cocoa and six tons of rice and South Korea will left with the six tons of cocoa and 14 tons of rice in 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 that terms in that term increase in com, uh, consumption as a result of special because of this trade they are uh, tr uh, they are uh, they got extra for t the south the ghana is getting four tons of cocoa extra and uh, south korea three t t five tons of cocoa and the other hand they are producing extra ghana is getting extra one ton of rice and south korea four tons of rice this is this was the example of uh, cocoa and rice with the example of uh, uh, absolute compar comparative advantage what they have to compare the first situation is the same and the second one is when they are not specializing doing any trade with each other the total production would be the same 12.5 12.5 both for ton for for uh, cocoa and rice and then the next one when they are producing specialized unit then the for cocoa they are producing 15 ton of uh, rice and uh, for uh, 15 ton of cocoa and 13.5 ton of rice when they are swapping with each other the four tons of cocoa with four tons of rice with uh, they are swapping these products with each other then the total benefit what they are getting is that they end up with the ghana is end up with the 11 tons of cocoa and four and 7.75 ton of rice and south korea four tons of uh, cocoa and six tons of rice these are the basic study and they are mm, uh, they, they are uh, better off with the one ton of cocoa 
and 0.25 ton of rice for uh, for Ghana and South Korea one ton of cocoa and one one uh, one ton of rice. This is the ultimate benefit what they are getting in terms of when they are focusing on comparative advantage. Important thing what they are doing is that uh, when the example that we had discussed. Uh, important thing is when they are like we have uh, uh, we uh, why we uh, uh, go through again uh, with this example is we had to focus there are some suppositions of these hypothetical examples that uh, important thing is this is a positive sum gain mean both countries are getting because in the first term in the mercantilism we have uh, learn this thing that that's a zero sum game mean uh, one one country is getting uh, getting positive outcome and the other country is getting negative outcome mean overall uh, the result is zero zero sum game uh, positive plus negative is equal to zero that, that that's how we, they are getting but in the comparative advantage they are saying is a positive sum game mean one country is getting something and second country is also getting something when they are trading with each other this is a, a positive sum positive sum game but the important thing is there are some positions behind this trade or this example the example was this is a simple example of the two countries where uh, there are number uh, the two countries with the two goods this is the first thing the second thing is zero transportation cost. We we just suppose that there is no there was no transportation cost. Similar uh, similar prices and value again uh, similar uh, the prices were similar and values are similar. Resources are mobile between the goods within the countries, but no across countries. Uh, a constant return to scale fixed stocks of resources and no efforts on income distribution within the country. Mean when we are uh, going to see or when we are going to apply this example uh, in, in real world what gonna happen what gonna, uh, the thing is we have to see this position in other way around like uh, when we are going to apply the comparative advantage concept in uh, in real world we are going to see that there are not only two countries there are a lot of countries across the globe and there are not only two products there are plenty of products that countries can swap with each other next is zero transportation cost I mean this one uh, also this position will not hold in the real world because there is a transportation cost when especially when if you are trying to with this is the important determining factor when uh, countries decide to trade uh, uh, between each other especially when the country is uh, thinking to uh, uh, like we had discussed in the uh, last lectures that uh, country when uh, make the international trade they have to decide this uh, they have to select the location and while selecting the location uh, the transportation cost is very important factor especially when the country is a uh, uh, neighboring country that uh, to that one the transportation cost will be lower on the other hand if it's far uh, it's located far away from the host country then the transportation cost will uh, will cost extra money to the to the to the first country and the next one is uh, similar prices prices cannot be similar very difficult it's very difficult to standardize the price, uh, prices because the com multinational companies set the prices uh, according to the production cost across the across the countries mean um, they are facing they are incurring the different production costs across the countries that's why they have to set the prices differently across the countries and they have different values the preferences for the products uh, people across the countries resources are mobile between goods within the countries but not across the country mobiles are uh, mobiles are uh, mobile resources are mobile within the country but not the, across the country but mobile resources can be used across the countries and, and this was the also the exam uh, assumption which uh, f which is false in real world constant return to scale this is the important thing where in, in like in the example we had discussed this thing that in the beginning when they are producing the small product a uh, small amount of uh, these product like cocoa and rice uh, economy uh, and later on they're starting to produce when they are foc focusing on the specialized product there of course the level of a uh, quantity of products were higher at that time we uh, we are just uh, we are ignoring the concept of economy of scale because when the firms are producing at a larger scale the prices automatically go down this is the end uh, in this example we are uh, ignoring this fact and in real world we have to uh, bear in mind this concept as well 
fixed stocks of resources stocks of resources cannot be fixed in real world stock of resources mean human capital ca uh, uh, financial stocks these cannot be fixed mean uh, companies uh, will while do, um, while making the trade they can uh, they can up, they can come ups and down because of the macroeconomic situation there can be uh, some uncertainties and the resources cannot be we can, companies cannot keep these resources fixed no effect no effects on income distribution across the country this was another assumption which is, which is false okay dynamic uh, okay simple extension of the ricardian model uh, like this comparative advantage is the ricardian model and uh, ricardian uh, dynamic effect in economic growth important thing is uh, the first one is immovable resources resources do not always move freely from one economic uh, ec economic activity to another important thing is when uh, we had discussed this thing or we can say that the main in one important uh, assumption underlying uh, underneath the ricardian model was that uh, resources can easily uh, uh, freely uh, move from one economic activity to another like uh, in this example we had discussed that resources in the early stage they are producing just two products when they are focusing on their specialized product they just move all those resources from one product to the another in reality in real world it's not possible i mean it is possible but it cost money to the com to the company to the firm to move resources from one product to the another this is what this assumption is saying the first line the next one is a dynamic effects and economic growth this is the uh, now we are talking about the link what is the link between the uh, effects and dynamic economic growth uh, and trade the the relationship between trade and economic growth trade might increase the country's stock of resources as increased supplies become available from abroad these are the uh, important thing is now in this example uh, now what they are, uh, we are trying to discuss is what is the relationship between what is the impact of trade on economic growth and the first one is that trade will increase the country's stock of resources and uh, as uh, uh, stock of resources which are available to the firm I mean of course when the trade is going to happen with the other country uh, uh, the uh, capital is coming in the country the resources of uh, are automatic like, like right now uh, mean in re in recent days what happened that uh, economic uh, in uh, china's uh, china is agreed to invest 46 billion us dollars in the pakistan what's going to happen the stock of resources of pakistan will automatically increase because of this capital injection injection within the country this is the first thing we have to consider and second thing is in 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 indirect way this is the direct this was the direct way and indirect way we can see that when the people they are going to uh, invest money they are uh, a lot of jobs will be produced within the economy uh, people of pakistan are going to get the uh, jobs and they are going to get salary of course and they are going to more uh, the power of buying power will be increased mean a lot more people are buying products I mean, th that's how I mean uh, overall resources of uh, countries. It all those things mean again the saving will be uh, the pattern of saving will be changed because the people have more power, more money to spend the uh, saving pattern. And this and these are the th a lot of things where which uh, can indirectly affect on the uh, country's resources. Another point is free trade might increase the efficiency of resource utilization. Efficiency of resource utilization. Uh, what, what does it mean? The first one is when the uh, when the companies from the foreign markets or uh, multinational companies enter in the domestic market. What happens that uh, uh, the important thing is that they increase the competition within the domestic market. Because of that competition, domestic firms are forced to think about or uh, pay more attention on the quality of their own products and the prices of their products these are two important things but they have to do when they face more competition of course the when we talk about the quality of course these if the, those firms are working in the high tech sector of course then uh, these domestic firms are overall the industry is going to focus on the in, in when, uh, innovation 
and they are trying to invent new product they are going to spend more money on the R&D this is the first thing level of uh, technology will be uh, high mean uh, companies this is the one thing the second thing is spillover effects spillover effect is when the foreign companies uh, enter uh, multinational companies uh, enter into the uh, uh, into the any market what what happened the first one is the domestic market is going to uh, uh, show more efficiency the second thing is they are going to get technology spillover I mean they the multinational companies are going to bring a new technology in that country and the domestic firms are going to get benefit from that technology this is the uh, this is in it is the second way how domestic firms are going to be uh, benefited from the uh, from the foreign uh, capital or foreign trade uh, and the last one is the free up resources for other use when they are um, moving when they are investing or uh, using more resources to the other product production pr production of other products of course they will uh, there will be some resources will uh, the companies can put as spare okay on the f on this uh, this apps in comparative advantage thing uh, there was another uh, critique uh, is uh, done by uh, one uh, um, philosopher called uh, Samuelson and Samuelson uh, argues that ability to offshore services jobs that were traditionally not inten internationally mobile may have the effect of mass inward migration into the United States where wage would then fall the, the important thing that is saying that ability to offshore services jobs that were traditionally not internationally mobile if uh, um, services which are jobs uh, which are not internationally mobile across the countries what gonna happen that uh, affect my inward immigration I mean when the companies cannot uh, mobile their uh, uh, services to other countries when they cannot shift their certain parts certain jobs to another country what gonna happen because for instance uh, uh, in, in certain countries uh, if the, if the like in China if they are in need to hire uh, if they cannot, uh, they, if, if they are facing a situation where they need people who can speak English, this is the uh, predicament when they are facing this sort of situation. What going to happen? The first option is they can move their production units so to a certain extent or that special thing, the special that process uh, where they need. Uh, English language what they can do they can move that part of uh, production the part of process uh, to the another country this is the first thing or second thing is they can call or bring people in in, in uh, they can ask people to come into the China because of that uh, when their um, demand will be higher uh, for English people in China then what gonna happen the immigration inward immigration will be higher and the Samuelson, what they did, he investigated this concept in the concept in the context of USA, and he was saying that uh, uh, specifically, uh, Samuelson investigated this concept in the high tech sector, and uh, he is say, uh, he is saying this thing that uh, 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 USA is uh, getting a lot of people from the third world countries as a as a white collar people uh, as a high skilled workers and uh, these workers are getting jobs of US people uh, and automatically when their people from other countries are going to come into the USA might be they will be agreed to get a lower uh, uh, wages as well and because of that thing wages would overall wages within the industry would fall okay this is the uh, this is the country in focus moving uh, this concept is applied on the uh, US white collar jobs uh, within the USA uh, the the quick summary of this uh, uh, this scenario is this feature goes to the and important thing is this in uh, this uh, case study small case study is available in the book of Hill edition eight uh, I have uh, provided the name and the whole complete detail of this book in the outline and uh, you can get this uh, the details of this case study this uh, small case study. Uh, in the in that book, chapter number six. This feature goes to the heart of the debate 
that has been played out many times over the past half century, the transference of jobs from the United States to low-wage countries. This is, the, this is the main thing. The main issue of this uh, context is, or this uh, case study is, job is moving away from the USA to third world countries. The difference now, however, is that rather than blue collar jobs being transferred, the new trend is for white collar jobs to move jobs associated with the knowledge based economy. The important thing is the old concept in the early days, in the early years, it was what was, what was happening that only the blue collar job was going away from the USA to the immigrant people. Now the new trend, this guy is in this case study is showing is focusing on the new trend that white collar job mean highly skilled workers are also this these jobs are also moving away from the USA to third world countries which are new uh, knowledge based economies like India and China and Brazil and Russia. The question that you need to think about and we can discuss about these questions are will the United States further suffer from the loss of highly skilled and highly paying jobs? What does the transference of white collar jobs mean to the average American? Right. The first thing is wh uh, what is the significance of uh, the moving away the white collar jobs to the from the USA to the uh, knowledge based economies like India and China. The second question that we can focus on what does the transference of white collar jobs mean to recipient uh, countries such as India and Philippines. I mean, of course, there will be a bo effect across the across the continent. I mean, and host country and the uh, uh, home country, both countries are going to be affected from this uh, sort of a move or a flow of job. I mean, uh, USA as a ho uh, home country and the India or Philippines as a host country. What sort of effects they are experiencing because of this flow? The third one is why do American companies transfer white collar jobs to countries like India and Philippines? The third, this is the third question, that why these countries are m transferring these white collar jobs from from USA to the other country. These are the three questions that you have to focus, and we can discuss in the next lecture. Okay. These, this is the link between the trade and growth. And studies exploring the relationship between trade and economic growth suggest that countries that adopt a more open stance towards international trade enjoy high growth rates than those that close their economies to trade. These, this is, and the, what are the benefit? Benefit that we had already discussed that trade increases stock of resources, like we said. Uh, the second one is trade increases efficiency in terms of technology, competition, and econo economy of scale. These three elements we have already done. But, um, but the important thing that what is discussing is the this uh, the because of this this link, people uh, the countries are getting benefit. But important thing is uh, it's it's different. It varies across the countries. Countries who close their doors doors and their policies are not uh, friendly or not encouraging international trade to come or go out from their countries but what's, what's happening they are not and they are not uh, experiencing the growth on the uh, uh, in contrast countries who are making policies or uh, such uh, regulations which encourage the international trade in those countries these countries are experiencing high growth like India and China and uh, uh, these are the recent uh, examples of the countries who open their doors for the trade. Okay, the next uh, the theory after the comparative theory of uh, Ricardo and uh, Samuelson uh, uh, critique, now we will talk about the heckscher ohlin theory. These are the Swedish guys and they, uh, they proposed that uh, Heckman, uh, they argued that uh, comparative advantage arises from the differences in national factor endowment. Factor endowment, endowment mean the gift, mean, uh, uh, mean factor endowment, we can explain this concept that uh, her country, which is Allah Ta'ala ki taraf se, usse koi na koi nehmete nawazi gai hai. Baath countries uh, ko Allah Ta'ala ne jo, the nature, the important thing is if, if we call it uh, in, in terms of nature, or uh, uh, each country is benefited with a different sort of resources by the nature. 
we in some countries are blessed with the oil some minerals some gas uh, th these are the one with natural resources and uh, second so sort of resources are some um, people some countries are uh, are are blessed with the high uh, highly skilled workers are more uh, like japan they have more engineers or scientific uh, educated people they have this sort of thing and some countries are high they are high uh, highly technological uh, equipments or machinery they have they are, they got the factor endowment in that terms Heckscher and Ohlin theory predicts that countries will export goods that they make intensive use of those factors that are locally abundant while importing those products that are intensive use of factors that are locally scarce. I mean, this theory is focusing, or importantly, this theory is suggesting that countries, rather than they have, they are not, they shouldn't focus on the comparative advantage or absolute advantage. What they have to do, they, this theory is saying, uh, simple statement that each country is benefited or blessed with some resources either natural resources or uh, some advanced some other human capital or technological resources what they have to do they should only export those products where they have factor endowment where they are blessed and where in those sectors where they are not blessed they have to import the products for those sectors this is a simple thing this symbol mean like uh, uh, Saudi Arabia is blessed with oil they have to export oil and uh, for instance they are not blessed with the fertile uh, land agricultural land they have to just import those products from other countries this is a simple rule important thing is this is relative uh, relative not the absolute when we talk about relative or absolute important thing what we have to consider is we are comparing the factor endowment factor mean uh, like um, like for instance if we say that Saudi Arabia is blessed with uh, oil what does it mean I mean we are of course going to compare the level the uh, the amount of oil that Saudi Arabia has with compared to other countries we are going to compare with other countries right and uh, and as compared to other countries Saudi Arabia has more oil this is the thing and in that way we we are comparing and we are considering the factor endowment in terms of relative scale not the absolute scale this is important we are comparing across the countries and uh, that uh, or within the country we can compare within the country as well I mean like uh, Saudi Arabia is blessed with oil and Saudi Arabia is blessed with uh, if Saudi Arabia is blessed with some other uh, factor endowment some other uh, some some sort of thing like uh, they have more uh, some uh, some mineral some min if they have some mineral then we have to compare the which uh, which thing is uh, present in more abundant form I mean oil or that mineral of course the oil is more then of course we will consider that this uh, Saudi is going to focus or Saudi is the fa is blessed with oil and they have to export oil that means in relative term not the absolute one okay the next one is Leontief Leontief paradox paradox mean uh, some something uh, uh, which is not uh, uh, not according to the prediction or something uh, situation some some problem in 1953 uh, Wesley Leontov postulated that since the US was relatively abundant in capital compared to other nations the US would be an exporter of the capital intensive goods and importer of labor intensive goods. I mean we are we are uh, we are uh, we are following the factor endowment concept and we are also following the uh, uh, the uh, comparative advantage thing like comparative advantage thing is when they are able to do when they have some uh, efficient in production with something efficient in production something they have to focus on those things and this Leontov is saying that US is uh, blessed or we can say that is comparatively US have US has more is abundant in capital uh, in in capital as compared to other countries mean uh, mean USA is uh, more uh, 
blessed or more they have a more competitive advantage or they have a stronghold in capital like in capital mean they are more uh, uh, big uh, b the investments the production of such such products which require more investment us got more investment and so these are thing as compared to the labor because the labor is more expensive in usa then what they have to do they have to import those products which are labor intensive products mean in such products where uh, labor is more involved the sh uh, america shouldn't produce those products what they have to do they rather they have to exp import those products from the other countries where uh, labor is more cheap like in third world countries and they have to export the products uh, capital intensive product which which is a stronghold of the usa but what lee on top Uh, observe ac across the country i mean across the country across the usa across the states what he observed that uh, he 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 uh, studied the pattern across the years of us trade and the the he he said that he what he observed that usa's exports are less capital sensitive in intensive than the us imports mean what what he observed that uh, in contrast to these prediction the uh, the liant of uh, observed that usa is exporting labor intensive things rather than importing the labor intensive thing usa is doing the opposite thing this is the, this is the these results are variance with the prediction is op opposite to the what was the prediction and that's why it was it is known as the liant of paradox important thing is uh, the the only only uh, answer of this uh, this uh, situation could be the most probable rationale of this situation was like uh, might be usa is exporting the labor intensive product these labor intensive products are highly uh, skilled labor intensive products this is the only reason this is the only answer uh, the people can provide of leon turks uh, question that might be these labor intensive products are the highly skilled product like uh, production of the computer uh, computers uh, production of uh, these uh, bio instruments or this uh, rockets or something uh, some uh, air jet uh, technologies these sort of technology mean where the uh, the, tech, the industry requires the highly skilled labor and uh, considering usa is doing more uh, labor intensive exports might be usa is doing this sort of exports where the highly cost labor is involved the next one is product life cycle theory product life cycle theory is proposed by raymond vernon in 1960 uh, he suggested that as products mature both the location of sale and the optimal production location will change affecting the flow and direction of trade early in the life cycle i mean important thing what is suggesting is with the passage of time when the product get more mature the location location of the production and the sales of the production Uh, sales of uh, sales location and the production location will change as with the passage of time as the uh, as the product will mature and this one i mean uh, uh, i could explain in this way that jahan pe cheez ya product ne bikna hai wo location aur jahan pe us product ne banna hai बिकने वाली यानी मार्केट और जो प्रोडक्शन वाली जगह है दोनों चीज़ें जो हैं दोनों लोकेशन लोकेशन दोनों चीज़ों की प्रोडक्शन की भी और सेल की भी दी ये लोकेशन चेंज हो जाएगी विद द पैसेज ऑफ टाइम जून जून प्रोडक्ट जो है वो मेच्योर हो जाती है जून जून प्रोडक्ट को इन्वेंट किए हुए या मार्केट में फ्लोट किए हुए ज़्यादा टाइम गुजरता है तो सेल की जगह प्रोडक्शन की जगह चेंज हो जाएगी दिस इज कॉल द प्रोडक्ट लाइफ साइकिल एंड एंड वेरनोन इज एक्सप्लेनिंग दिस थिंग विद द हेल्प ऑफ वन एग्जांपल। फर्स्ट वी विल वी विल एक्सप्लेन द मेन इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट्स ऑफ दिस वेरनोन थ्योरी देन वी विल वी विल डिस्कस दिस थिंग और वी विल ट्राई टू एक्सप्लेन दिस प्रोडक्ट लाइफ साइकिल विद द हेल्प ऑफ वन एग्जाम्पल ऑफ द इन्वेंशन ऑफ द कैमरा how it happened and what happened in reality 
and uh, on the basis of that thing that product this well known explain this product life cycle early in the life cycle of a typical new product while demand is starting to grow in the USA demand in other advanced country is limited to high income groups and so it is not worthwhile for firms in those countries to start producing the new product but it does necessitate some exports from the US to other countries over time demands for the new product starts to grow in other advanced countries making it worthwhile for the foreign producer to begin producing for their home markets US firms might also st uh, set up production facilities in those advanced countries where the demand is growing growing limiting the exports from the USA as the market in the US and other advanced nations mature the product becomes more standardized and price become more, more competitive weapon producers based in the advanced countries where the labor costs are lower than the United States might now be able to export to the US if cost pressures become intensive developing countries begin to acquire a production advantage over the advanced country the united states switches from being exporter of the products to the importer of that product as production becomes a more exceptional uh, concentrated in low cost foreign locations the example is okay we we discuss this thing again with the help of the um, example of uh, xerox photocopier uh, uh, that okay we start with this thing that in the beginning uh, in, in, in the era of 60s that uh, USA the photocopier machine is invented by U by Xerox in USA okay this is the first thing and what happened they started to produce the Xerox photo uh, this photocopier for to meet the demands within USA okay later on they started to export um, people in the other countries other developed countries they started to aware of this in the benefits of the of this product what they did when us this xerox company started to export this photocopier machine in the european countries as well okay since people were aware uh, people get aware of this thing and the demand of the product increases what the uh, what, what happened that uh, rather than producing rather than just exporting Xerox started to build its production unit in Europe as well. This is the second step what the uh, Xerox did. When the Xerox started to produce their products in Europe for European markets, uh, of course the European uh, high tech sector will be uh, will be uh, will get that uh, technology as well, and and they started to build photocopy machines in Europe as well. Uh, this is this is the second thing and now in the European market there was a competition for Xerox mean Xerox uh, Xerox they they are selling in Europe and European companies with the passage of time uh, when these when they observe that the demand of the photocopy machine increases the European companies jumped into the photocopier industry as well and they started to produce the photocopier machines and now in the market they were uh, two different sort of firms one is the US firm and the second is the European firms now there is a competition and whoever is selling cheaper they are going to get the market market share capitalization will be increased for those companies who are pro providing uh, less cost of this photography offering the less cost of these machines this is the second thing and the third thing is this is now there is a better now might be with the passage of Mazid of time goes like so this product might be this product will be um, these companies European countries or the US countries they are going to shift these products or uh, introduce these products just to sell into the other might be the less developed countries as well now we can call them the, to the third world countries again when they, they is in the beginning they are going to start the product start just selling the product in the third world countries and then later on when they see when when they see there is a huge demand in the third world countries and then what they are going to do they are going to install the production unit in third world countries to to further reduce the cost of the production by av uh, availing the low cost labor now at this stage what going to happen it will be more costly for the us xerox firm to export from USA to Europe or third world country what they gonna do rather what they can when what they can do they can import the product from third world country to USA 
because it's now the production will be more cheaper in the in, in the third world countries and in that way we can say that with the, when we when we observe the passage of time and the, when the product product is getting more mature competition is changing market demand is cha more increasing competition is increasing and because of these things uh, what what's happening usa change their mode from as a exporter to importer of those products and this is what exactly happened with the photocopy machine and this happened uh, with the ma many other products in 60s 70s 50s 60s 70s and 80s but if we consider this thing that the main uh, this is the evolution of main theme of this concept is uh, that every new product will start from the USA this is the, this is the underlying drawback of this uh, philosophy like we w what about the uh, TV which is invented by Japan color TV is invented in Japan laptop which is uh, started in USA but at the same time it sim simultaneously introduced across the uh, Europe USA and in other uh, might be uh, China or other countries as well in s across the world it is into introduced simultaneously of course this concept cannot be applied on this sort of uh, product cannot be applied on on TV because TV is not introduced in US it's uh, invented by through uh, in Japan and how can we apply this concept in uh, on those products that's a, this is the drawback of the theory and and theory cannot be applied on those products and now the new trade theory because of these drawbacks there are there people were struggling to find out new theories why they are trying to find new theories because to explain the trade flow how the flow of things flow of trade is happening across the countries the one concept that according to new trade theory the new one concept is economy of scale economy of scale mean the peer the uh, when companies are producing their products at a larger scale of course the cost of production is decreasing this is the important thing. unit cost of production is decreasing the second thing is first mover advantage this is the very important thing is firms with uh, uh, firms with first mover advantage will develop economies of scale and create barriers to enter. I mean when they enter in the market this they try they try to control the market and they set uh, in such a way such a uh, they control the market in such a way that uh, new entrant shouldn't enter in the market they stop and this uh, they create obstacles in for the other firms to enter in the market this concept first mover advantage first mover into advantage jo pehle market mein aa gaya ye iska basic hai. मतलब ये हो जाएगा लेकिन जो बेसिक चीज़ है वो ये है कि ये कॉन्सेप्ट इज़ ओनली एप्लीकेबल इन दोज मार्केट और इन फॉर दोज प्रोडक्ट्स वेयर द डिमांड ऑफ दैट प्रोडक्ट्स इज़ वेरी लिमिटेड लाइक वी कैन से दैट एयर एयर जेट मीन कंसीडर द एग्जांपल ऑफ दिस यानी ये जो एयर जेट की जो इंडस्ट्री है जहाज जहाज की इंडस्ट्री जो है there are only two main uh, the boeing have or airbus have. these are the two main producer of these two things of of jets and uh, wherever they enter in these uh, these countries enter in the new market when they enter in the new market they create the obstacle for the other country uh, for the other firms to enter in that market okay the next point is increasing product variety and reducing the costs a uh, nation may be able to specialize in producing a narrow range of products that it would be in absent of the trade yet by goods that doesn't make from the other countries each nation can simultaneously increase the variety of goods available to its con consumers and lower the cost of those goods increasing the pro product variety and reducing the cost this is the thing that uh, with the passage of time they are trying to because of that competition they are trying to be unique and they are trying to uh, introduce new products in the market and uh, with the reduced cost 
important thing uh, again that the pattern of trade we observe in the world uh, in the world economy may be the result of first mover advantage or economy of scale these are the t uh, according to the new trade theory these are the most important concept which can explain the flow of trade okay um implication a uh, competitive advantage the extension of trade is implication of government should consider strategic trade okay because of this thing that the the um, the new thing or we can say that the the port uh, port uh, this guy he incorporated all the previous concepts in his theory and he introduced uh, a porter diamond theory uh, which is called porter's diamond what he said that he ex he proposed four factors he according to his factors uh, the first factor is factor endowment like uh, factor endowment mean uh, uh, the factor uh, which is uh, uh, jo country ke andar country jo bless hai jis factor ke liye jis cheez ke liye allah taala ki jo zyada neemat maujood hai us country mein ye ye pehla point hai factor endowments endowment mean gifts nations position in factor of production can can lead to competitive advantage mean speci specifically for that product a country or companies can get a competitive advantage on the basis of that endowment factor mean if if that uh, uh, if a certain country is like example of uh, like we again we co continue with the example of the saudi arabia uh com oil and gas companies in the in the saudis uh, they are uh, they have the competitive advantage because they are residing in that they belong to that country where this factor is uh, they have a stronghold in the oil and gas in fact oil these factor can be uh, uh, either basic ho sakte hain ya these can be the advanced factor skill labor infrastructure technological know how like uh, usa they they are uh, factor endowment factors are um, advanced factors hain uh, they got the skill labor hai technological know how hai and the infrastructure they are better infrastructure the second factor the uh, second uh, attribute of this theory is the demand condition the nature of home demand of the industries product or services influence the development of capability mean if the demand of certain product is higher in certain in in certain country then that demand will motivate that company that firm to introduce new products in the market like uh, we 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 continue with uh, we example we give the example of ericsons in the sweden people of ericsson were more uh, they got more uh, technological know how back then and they when uh, ericsson were uh, introduced new product in the market the people the consumer of that product in that country they were demanding some extra features in in that applica uh, that telephone that uh, mobile and because of that demand of more higher features that company were was pushed was forced to invent more or introduce new thing which satisfy the need of the customers because of that uh, demand condition they uh, introduced the new thing and they capture and subsequently they captured the market the uh, second thing is uh, um, when the competitive uh, again thing one thing if the industry is more competitive that's another factor then the, of course the, that firm is forced to uh, uh, invent something new they are forced to do these sort of things because of that uh, uh, competition they have to, uh, when they uh, when they are uh, when they have to stay in the market if if they intend to stay in the market they have to introduce new thing they have to be unique they have to invest more and they in in r&d in in producing in offering something new to the customers these all all these things comes because of demand conditions the third thing is relating and supporting industries if the presence the present supplier industries and the related industries that are intention internationally competitive can spill over and can contribute to other industries like very famous example uh, is that uh, when uh, usa have the very sophisticated and uh, very flourished uh, semiconductor industries 
then this semiconductor industry facilitated or uh, uh, helped t uh, other uh, computer industry to produce the computers mean related and sport they supported it they supported the production of the computers i mean this is the important thing that when uh, uh, in certain country of uh, for certain firms when they have relating and sporting industries uh, which are really uh, uh, state of the art industries and state and they have the uh, really established industries then they can further uh, encourage and help to produce something uh, superior products for other industries in other industries or products related to other industries successful industries tend to be grouped in cluster in, the, in in countries having world class manufacturers of semiconductor processing equipment can lead to uh, to a competitive semiconductor industry the th last thing is firm strategy structure and rivalry the condition in the market determining how companies are created organized manage and nature of domestic rivalry so for example focus of japanese and german management in production design which is their competitive advantage like um, again firm strategy structure and rivalry firm strategy and structure may we can talk about the management style of japanese and uh, german uh, automobile firms uh, and their management style was their competitive advantage to the uh, competitive advantage for them this theory uh, this porter's uh, diamond they beside these four factors they are also uh, uh, stressing on the importance of change uh, chance and the government mean uh, f chance mean we can say the luck mean uh, especially this the first one the chance factor is more pertinent to the uh, uh, innovative industry might be when the people and the companies are investing money for the innovation and some country some company get uh, some something new out of that research that's just by ch it can happen by chance and the last factor is the government the involvement of the government government involvement can be positive or negative if the uh, positive initiatives are taken from the government of course then uh, f uh, the companies are going to be motivated and they are going to be facilitated uh, to produce something new and get the competitive advantage on the other hand if the government is creating obstacles for the firms then these uh, of course that competitive they are going to lose the competitive advantage as compared to other countries firms and uh, um, graphically we can put like this these are interdependent these factors are interdependent with each other this is the example of uh, management of nokia okay now these are the two important things focus of the managerial implication how location factor and first mover advantage and government policy implement uh, and uh, in the current era these factors are very important and these factors can apply in uh, are definitely pertinent in the uh, pertinent to explain the trade flow uh, in nowadays and we we see that we observe that uh, location factor government policies and the first mover advantage are uh, primal factors which influence the uh, the flow of trade across the countries this is the quick summary of the today's lecture we had discussed the basic assumptions of the competitive and uh, competitive advantage theory and we have discussed the simulson critique and uh, after that we had discussed the trade relationship between trade and economic growth Hecksher uh, and Olin's theory, which argues that the comparative advantage arises from a difference in national factor endowments, the, and this one, this one is a relative, not the absolute one. And later on, the Leontief postulated that the uh, postulated a paradox. In uh, is after that, the Vernon pr proposed the uh, product life cycle theory, according to which the products mature both locations and of sales and the optimal production location will change affecting the flow and direction of trade and then we had discussed the economy of scale first mover advantage and the pattern of trade lastly we had discussed the porter's uh, theory porter's theory in porter's theory we had discussed the four important factors the, these factors were factor endowment factor 
demand conditions, uh, relating and sporting industries, and firm strategies. These were the four factors we had discussed, and the, beside these factors, the portal also stressed on the chance and the role of the government uh, in, in, in beside these factors, which can uh, provide the competitive, in creation of the competitive advantage, advantage for the firm. That was the today's lecture. Um, thank you for today. Okay, Allah Hafiz.